We go in the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. In the Huddle is driven by Mills Fleet Farm. From Tanner's Sports Grill in Kimberly. Here is Justin Hall with Packers offensive tackle David Bottieri. And a good evening to you from a ruckus Tanners in Kimberly. We are in the huddle here on the Woodward Radio Network. Good to be with you here today and glad to introduce our co-host, our Packer co-host for 2013. Is He'll be here every other week throughout the season. Fourth round pick in this past April's draft, rookie offensive tackle out of the University of Colorado. He wears number 69, David Bakhtiari. David, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you here, and we're excited to have David on, and, and I was talking a little bit about this and share a story with him early on. When, when training camp begins and, and the media has an opportunity to go talk to the rookies and, and really get to find out more about them and, and what they have to say, David was one of the most impressive individuals in that room. He just talked and talked and talked, great football insight, and, and, and this will be a surprising thing. He's 21 years old. 21 years young. 21 years young. <laughs> So looking forward to uh, having him aboard here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the San Francisco game to start things off. For a football fan, an entertaining game, the 34-28 the to 28 loss at the hands of the 49ers. Obviously, it uh, didn't go your way. But your first taste of regular season football, David, uh, just give us your thoughts there. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. And uh, I kind of been my, my theme I've been telling people is kind of, uh, you know, baptism by inferno, essentially. You know, I haven't had time to... I don't have much time to kind of adjust to the, the league, but I, I've been, uh, I feel like I've done a pretty good job in, uh, you know, this past game, I had a very tough opponent, you know, going against the uh, Smith brothers, and it's just flat out, you know, the 49er defense. That's what I was going to say. You said baptism by Inferno. Alden Smith is about as good as it gets for a defensive end, and I, I know early on he, he got you once, but I know Mike McCarthy said you, you did a great job in the game. Uh, how did you grade out? Um, I did well. I will, you know, the coaches were very pleased. Uh, and that's about as much as I can say <laughs> <laughs> within the rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, looking at that game, it was San Francisco and kind of a homecoming for you, right? Yeah, uh, very much. I grew up about 15 minutes outside. So when we got there, we had a few hours off. I, I live about seven minutes away from the airport. So I went over there and kind of hung up. My family took a nap in my bed, which was very nice, you know, trying to get very comfortable before the game. And... Uh, I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, I grew up, you know, going to that game. I, I was a 49er fan, um, as well as my whole family. Um, and they're slowly trying to convert over to the, you know, being a cheesehead. Uh, but, I mean, it was just an awesome experience, you know, growing up watching them play. And then now, you know, I got to play there last year in that stadium that I, you know, used to go as a little kid. And, and uh, your brother played in the NFL a little bit, too. Yeah, I mean, him being on the team, uh, being playing for the 49ers, you know, kind of helped, you know, our, you know, how much we liked the uh, 49ers, or used to. Uh, and, uh, you know, he still plays now. He's just, uh, I mean, he was a big influence on my life, and especially with football. I mean, he really helped me out, you know, grow as a football player and as a person. Well, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that game yesterday, and, and I think the play that, that Packer Nation is talking about, Jim Harbaugh still talking about it too, was the, uh, the Clay Matthews hit on a Colin Kaepernick, uh, Joe Staley. He, uh, he went up to Clay and got the personal foul. The offsetting penalties, were, were, were you guys aware of the controversy with that play when, when Mike Pereira of Fox came on and, and let everybody know what happened? Um, I mean, from my perspective, all I saw was um, Clay tackle him out of bounds. So I didn't know how, you know how much, how far he was inbounds and or out of bounds. I just saw after that, you know, the, Niner, the, the 49er team, they started going up to Clay. A scruffle happened, and then I just grabbed my helmet and ran over there because, you know, you know, we're all on the same team. You know, we're all boys. So, you know, if one of the men gets in a scuffle, you know, we all got to go there to defend him. Uh, so I didn't, I, I didn't really know till you know, I saw a couple plays after. Like, oh, well, you know, I mean, he was close. I mean, he's, he's a running quarterback. So, you know, I think Clay, I mean, Clay's a smart player. I don't think he was doing it at all on purpose. I think he was more, you know, thinking the aspect of, you know, he's going to try and get the yards he can. Clay's going to make sure he gets the yards that he can't get. I'm going to bring it up in perspective, too. If that was the other way around and, and somebody did that to Aaron, I mean, you guys would have probably been there just as quickly as, as Oh, yeah, no. I, I mean, if you flip the, flip the script, I mean, of course, uh, you know, when you look at the play. But, I mean, we're not on that side of the uh, coin. So, 
I don't know really. I can't tell you. I, it's if ands and buts on that side. <laughs> well, time right now for our Compass Land Consultants Injury Report. We take a look at some of the Green Bay injuries, some of the injuries around the league each and every week. Now, Compass Land Consultants, a full-service real estate consulting business specializing in the sale of vacant land, including hunter hunting property and uh, timber investments. You a hunter at all, David? I have to ask. Um, I am s slowly doing more. I did a little bit in college, you know, being in Colorado, but... I mean, coming out here to Wisconsin, there's a little more opportunity and more time to. A lot more opportunity yes. and, and not a lot to do, so hunting <laughs> something you have to pick up. But just like the Green Bay Packers need an entire team of great players to be successful, you need a team of experts working for you when buying that perfect property. Compass Land Consultants has a team of experts ranging from real estate brokers to appraisers to professional foresters, all with knowledge you need when searching for that land. Let them put their team to work for you. Give them a call today, 800-548-6933, or check them out online at clclands.com. We'll go on over that injury report. Uh, we'll start with Morgan Burnett, who missed yesterday. Early on in the week, he was ready to go, coming back from the hamstring, and then on Friday it kind of popped up, and he was out for the game. I mean, you guys know just about as much as I did. I was, you know, focusing on my opponent at that time and, you know, kind of getting ready. You know, it was my first big showing, and, uh, I mean, you know, an injury is an injury, and you got to take care of yourself. You know, at the end of the day, we are the CEOs of our bodies, so we need, we know, you know, we need to take care of them. And it's a long season. It was just the first game, too. So, you know, I expect him to be back, and, you know, of course he's going to help us out. Yeah, he'll be reevaluated on Wednesday. Coach McCarthy saying that today. A cornerback Casey Hayward out with a hamstring injury. He'll be reevaluated as well. Linebacker Nick Perry hurt himself in the game yesterday at a fourth-quarter stinger. It's kind of a, a tough loss there as he was getting some pressure on the other side of Clay. Yeah, I... I mean, Nick's a good guy. Uh, you know, at the time when I was switching over playing right tackle, too, he, you know, he's a good ball player, too. So I expect, you know, good things from him and help out, you know, the pass rushing with Clay on the other side. You saw him a little bit in Colorado, right? Uh, yeah, we yeah. played against each other when he was at USC his last year. So uh, I did get a taste of him, and uh, he's a good player. A couple of uh, league-wide injuries as well. Jaguars quarterback uh, Blaine Gabbert needed 15 stitches in his throwing hand. He's out. That's a tough injury for a quarterback. It's very tough. Uh, Dez Bryant, a foot strain. Uh, X-rays were negative. He's likely to be back next week. Patriots running back Shane Vereen had 100 yards yesterday. Broke a bone in his hand. He's going to be out for a while. And maybe the uh, biggest injury loser of the week, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Marquise Pouncey and Larry Foote. A couple of big offensive linemen put on IR, so a tough loss for them in week number one. We'll be back with more with uh, David coming up and... We'll introduce you to our guest for today. Real excited to have Nate Palmer with us to tell you more about him. We are in the huddle from Tanners and Kimberly here on the Woodward Radio Network. <laughs> and we are back here at Tanners Sports Grill in Kimberly in the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. In the huddle brought to you each and every week by Mills Fleet Farm. This week, our Packer co-host, David Bakhtiari, the Packer offensive tackle and we want to invite everyone to interact with the show throughout the season on our social media we are on facebook you can go to facebook.com backslash in the huddle you can like us there you can submit your questions on the wall we'll get to some questions a little bit later on and you can follow us as well on twitter at in the huddle show and tweet your questions that way later in the show we'll do those questions and we'll pick a winner each and every week to win a nice prize from our uh, 2013 hosts. Well, let's introduce our guest for tonight. Really happy to have him aboard as well, a fellow rookie of David in the 2013 draft class, a sixth-round pick linebacker out of Illinois State. Welcome number 51, Nate Palmer. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. How's, how's Green Bay treated you so far? Uh, Green Bay is pretty fun, you know. You guys got to find the things that you like to do, you know. It's a small city but you know it's some big th it's some big city things that to do well you're from chicago which is interesting because we have san francisco growing up and we have chicago growing up and i'm sure as david mentioned real quickly uh, i'm sure you converted everybody really quick to the green and gold yeah that was a tough process you know but, <laughs> but uh for the most wasn't part, that most bad. of <laughs> for you, was it? <laughs> you, bring but, uh, them, you bring them to the good side, though. I mean, Green Bay, the success, Chicago, the lack of success, right? Something like that. <laughs> but, you know, I was once a uh, Chicago Bears fan, but, you know, the day I, I got that phone call, that all went out the window. So I'm happy to be in Green Bay, and I wish the Bears the best of luck. 
Well, we'll, uh, we'll start with Nate and talking a little bit about your uh, college career first. You, you started at Illinois, ended up transferring to Illinois State. Can I take us through that transition for you? Uh, it was just a, needed a fresh start, I guess. Um, I had got hurt in a car accident riding a scooter. A girl turned out in front of me, hit me. I ended up breaking my foot. And the repercussions of that, I didn't know my foot was broke. I practiced, and then they x-rayed it, found out it was broke. I missed four games. Got sent to the bottom of the depth chart, and I was just like, uh, I just need a fresh start. So contacted a few schools, and Coach Spack at Illinois State gave me the, uh, the start I needed. And uh, you mentioned going to Illinois State, a defensive end there. College career obviously went well. Back-to-back second-team Missouri Valley Conference recognition. So a good start for you and a lot of success on the field. Oh, yeah, it was uh, – it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty fun, you know. I just, I thank the coaching staff, the strength conditioning staff, and my teammates most of all because you know without none of them, none of that would have been possible. So, you know, I got a lot of people to thank other than myself. Well, uh, let's go to draft day. You mentioned <laughs> getting that call from the Green Bay Packers. Just kind of take us through your day and, and I guess those moments leading up to hearing from. Well, we'll, we'll find out who you heard from too. Uh, the day was pretty. Yeah, crazy, I guess you can say. I was watching the draft, trying to see the, because I got a bunch of boys who um, were in the draft this year, so I was trying to see that they get drafted. So I was, like, laying in bed, you know, hoping they get called and hoping I get called. And then I kind of got, like, upset with myself, so I cut the draft off and turned over to go to, to take a nap. And then uh, I remember putting my phone on the ring because I always keep it on silent. And then, like, probably 45 seconds to a minute later, my phone rung, and I looked, it said, I saw the area code and I got an iPhone and it said Green Bay, Wisconsin. I said, oh, I answered it. I can't even remember who it was because I was so <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> and they was like, uh, is this Nate? Is this Nate Palm? I was like, yeah, this is him. And they was like, this is such and such from Green Bay Packers. How you doing? I'm like, I'm all right. They said, we'll put you on the phone with our general manager, Ted Thompson, uh, talk to you. And then he said, Nate, yeah, we're coming up on the clock here. I'm thinking uh, we're going to take you with our sixth round pick. What do you think about that? And I, was, I thought I was talking, but I wasn't. He was like, Nate, you there? I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just so excited that I, I, I thought I was talking, but I wasn't. So, you know, all in all, it was a, you know, it was a wonderful day. How about for you, David? Kind of take us through your day and, and your story there. Um, it was definitely, you know, a happy experience. We, I threw a party the day before, too, because I thought I was going to be a day two guy, but I ended up going to day three. And uh, just sitting there watching, uh, you know, like I said, I had a bunch of friends being getting picked, so I was texting them as well. And then, uh, you know, I just was sitting there, and then all of a sudden my phone rang, did the same thing. I have an iPhone, and, you know, we're, we're not trying to, you know, sponsor, you know, Apple. We're just saying, you know, we both have iPhones. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I see the Green Bay uh, area code, and I pick it up. And uh, I think it might have been uh, Klein that was on the phone, and he said, all right, we're going to put you over the general manager. Uh, you put on Ted Thompson, and I just was just in complete shock. And I, I you know, just all these, I, I couldn't tell you one emotion because there's so many just running through me. And then, uh, you know, he's like, he's like, yeah, we're about to select you, uh, you know, with our, our fourth round pick. And I was just like, he's like, how do you feel? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel, you know, like, so excited. And then <laughs> I just went off and said, you know, I have, it's a pleasure. I just want to let you know, not only do I have your back, I have Aaron Rodgers' back. I remember telling him that, and, uh, you know, now. I guess what you five? Literally yeah, have five Aaron months Rogers later. Now I really do. So, at least I'm holding up my end. You know, at least uh, you know I can hold up what I say, which is good. <laughs> so Green Bay coming up on the uh, on the phones was that expected? Did you kind of have a, a feeling or a, you know no, any I mean, indication not, that Packers could for be me. the team? Not for me. Not for me either. So I I, I didn't know who was going to pick me. I mean, I had an idea, a broad idea, but at the end of the day, you never know what could happen. Mm. I think that's one of the themes you hear. It's almost like the, the least expected team is usually the one yeah. that ends up taking you guys. So, Well, uh, let's go to rookie orientation camp. Uh, kind of, Nate, walk us through that weekend, and, you know, what's it like? You, you find out you're drafted, and then you, I think you have to sit around for a week or two, and then you finally come to Lambeau Field, the Green Bay, where uh, your pro career is going to happen. Uh, it was – rookie, rookie minicamp was um, – it was like a – a roller coaster ride, I guess. It was like the first day my head was first practice. I, football never seemed so fast before, and it was just it wasn't because it was veterans. It was all rookies. It was just the fact that you know we just didn't nobody know what they was doing. So I was just running around, but you know as time progressed, everything pretty much slowed down, and then you know it started you know evening out. So here's my question: Do they do anything like icebreakers or events where you guys get to know each other? 
Uh, they give you the playbook and... <laughs> Welcome to the NFL. Exactly. Learn this. <laughs> and then they give you about a night, and then the next day they expect you to, you know, conduct practice as if you're, you know, four or five years that you've been there, you know, a couple of years. So it was just basically all I remember is just like uh, chickens with their head cut off. You know, we're kind of running around. They're calling things out. We're not knowing what they're saying. You know, we're just trying to yell yes, you know, trying to, you know, ev trying to impress everyone that you can. It just was, like he said, it was very up and down. Uh, but, I mean, the, the intensity was up there because, I mean, everyone was in there, you know, wanting to compete and get a spot. Well, you mentioned uh, competing and uh, getting a spot. Uh, David, kind of take us through what you were initially told because, obviously, coming into camp, you know, the, Brian Bulaga's the left tackle, the right tackle. Uh, it was uh, Don Barclay and uh, Marshall Newhouse battling for that position. And uh, your performance definitely won that left tackle spot, and I think a lot of people feel if, you know, you weren't there, you might be on the right side. But still, just kind of take us through camp and what you were told and, and kind of where you are today is, as you mentioned, literally protecting Aaron Rodgers' backside. Um, they didn't really tell me much. I just knew uh, when I came in, they, uh, they put up, a, you know, like a depth chart for us, and, you know, I was the second string left tackle. Um, and he never really said, you know, I expect you this, this, and this. He just... Kind of was like, all right, you know, go out there and play, you know, and want to see me improve. And, you know, my biggest thing was wanting to make sure, you know, I improved every day, either if it was something little or something big. And then, um, you know, going to the camp, I was still at the left tackle spot. And then once the pad came, the pads came on, I really started coming into my own. And uh, I got the opportunity where they told me that I'm going to get some, I'm going to fall into the, you know, the battling for the right tackle spot, which uh, I was very happy and fortunate to have. And then, like we say, you know, you never want to see, you know, what happened to Brian. That's terrible like I, I wouldn't say I'm not happy about it at all um, but I mean the opportunity arose and you know a lot of people only get one shot to do something so I'm just trying to make the most of my opportunity and that's you know what's been given to me and I you know I have to stay with it and, and you bring that up too and I mean how many NFL players how many athletes got their chance because of an injury I mean taking advantage of that opportunity yeah. I mean that's what you, you got to be ready for and you got to do that exactly Nate, kind of take us through through your camp and, uh, you know, your expectations heading in and battling and, and making this 53-man roster. Uh, my expectations going in was just, you know, just to try to make the 53-man roster. Uh, I don't know what was expected of me, you know, primarily as far on the defense. I know special teams' expectations were there, you know, being a late-round draft pick and, you know, having Clay and um, Nick Perry at the outside linebacker position, you know, so – I knew that I, if I was going to make the team, it was going to be based off that. Yeah, we'll get more into that coming up here as we continue on from Tanners and Kimberly in the huddle with David Bakhtiari and Nate Ballmer here on the Woodward Radio Network. <laughs> and we are back here at Tanners in Kimberly in the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network presented by Mills Fleet Farm. I am Justin Hall with Green Bay Packers, David Bakhtiari, and Nate Palmer. Transportation for our guests, provided by LNS Classic Limousine. Lenny and Sue, the best in the business. Lenny, how you doing? Lenny's a little tired today. He's over there. He's a little more quiet than uh, he usually is. But <laughs> Well, time right now for our wild card segment, as we're going to do this each and every week. And I was explaining to David we're going to try to think up something kind of off the wall a little, a little bit different outside of going over football and X's. Yeah, outside the box, that's probably a easier way to explain it. And uh, I'm going to be lazy this week. Last week we did 20 questions with Devon just to get to know him a little bit better and we'll do 20 questions with you guys, random questions. We might spend some longer time on some things, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this. All right, first question for you guys. What was the first thing you bought? when you signed your contract. <laughs> I like the smile, Nate, you start. I'll, I'll let him take this one. Uh, don't judge me, but, um, you know. We're judging. Okay. <laughs> I actually bought, it's not too expensive, you know. I allowed myself one goofy purchase. I bought a $400 Gucci belt. Oh. <laughs> a belt? Yes. That, that's a first, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> David, how about you? Um, I took more the comfort level because that's kind of how I like to dress more in the comfortable way. So I bought uh, about 20 pairs of Lululemon boxers. 
<laughs> you know, I've been, I had, pr I had cotton ones pretty much my whole life, and I told myself that I need to treat myself right, so bought myself 20 pairs. You gotta, you I'll gotta, tell you what, it was a smart purchase. I've been, I, have, I haven't regretted it. You gotta upgrade. You gotta be comfortable. Yeah. Yes. All right. Favorite Christmas present you got when you were a kid? Mm, I got these uh, Power Rangers walkie-talkies. And uh, I still had it. Well, my mom has the picture to this day of me. I got a, a tree full of gifts. And the only thing I got in my hand are these two walkie-talkies. <laughs> um, for me, it was either the Xbox when that came out or uh, I used to, I was obsessed with Pogs. So I know for Christmas I always ask for those, and I don't know if it uh, might be. It's it's like marbles with circu yeah, circular. Yeah, you get like it's called like a slammer. Cardboard? I can't believe I remember okay. this. It's like a slammer, <laughs> and uh, you have like all these little cardboard little coin things. And if you ever when you flip over, you take them. It was like old. I remember it was back when I was like eight, but I was obsessed with them. Who was your training camp roommate, and what was the best part of rooming with them? Me. Mm -hmm. uh, Training camp roommate, I didn't have one. Really? Yeah, because uh, I, I had room with JC when we That's got here, but then he got hurt. Yep. He uh, broke his foot or his leg, and he couldn't be on the third floor. And they definitely weren't gonna let a rookie be on the first floor. So I just had the room to myself. I'm surprised they didn't send the rookie with another guy, just so a, a veteran could. I happen. mean, did people know this, or did you kind of keep this a secret that you had your own room? I'm amazed. I mean. Let's just put it this way. I wasn't going to go ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nate? Uh, my trainer camp roommate was Sam Barrington. And uh, the best part about rooming with him is since he says I snore a lot, you know, and it's hard for him to go to sleep, he put his bed in the front part of the dorm room and mine was in the back part. So when the older guys came and tried to uh, prank us, they threw chocolate milk and stuff in our room, it got him instead of me. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty fun. So I, I know how he would have answered this question then. What was the worst part of rooming with Sam? The worst part of rooming with Sam? Yeah. Uh, Did he snore too? Nah, he didn't snore. He was, uh, yeah, actually there's no bad things about Sam, you know. He's, re he's real chill and laid back. Favorite food? Uh, anything. I mean, I'll, I'm an offensive <laughs> lineman. <laughs> so, I mean, usually when I go out to dinner or anytime we want to go out to food, any of the teammates, they always say, David, where do you want to go? I'm like, Really, it's on you. I can eat anything at the end of the day, so kind of anything, like pizza, pasta, I don't know. Do they make you buy then? Where do you want to go? You're buying. You're the rookie, right? Cheap. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nate? Uh, my favorite food is probably between Mexican and pasta. Favorite place to get that food in Green Bay? Chipotle. <laughs> I don't know how Mexican that really is. But Me either, but it's pretty good. <laughs> I, I believe it started I, in Colorado, good. too. I, I, so. like, I like El Sarape. Sarpe, and, um, yeah, I, I think you had it the first. Yeah, yeah, and my other place, probably Noodles and Company. Okay. What kind of car do you drive? I drive a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee. Nate? Uh, Chevy Trailblazer SS. You guys are smart. And we were talking about this before the show because you're prepared for the Wisconsin winter with the four by fours, where a lot of rookies come in, you know, from California with their. Well, because we, I came from Colorado, he came from Illinois, so you know. we're a little more prepared. You got to be. Position on the football field you would want to play if you could change for a week. Long snapper. Nice. Just very comfortable. Brett's got it made, doesn't He's he? He's got it made. I'll tell you what. It's very, you know, I mean. Long snapper. <laughs> uh, I'll probably play quarterback. Just because I always wanted to play quarterback. And I never could because, you know, I really, my accuracy is not there. So <laughs> they stuck me on defense. <laughs> you, you do know all the pressure, though. You know, being yeah, a quarterback here in Green Bay. Yeah, pressure's not the, you know, uh, pressure's what saying. Those diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about uh, a hobby that people would find shocking? Um, oh, I can throw it. C.J. Wilson plays the piano. That's the one that I told Devon last week, and he was shocked. I guess two. two uh, one, I'm secretly a really good tennis player, which really? kind of seems like an oxymoron because I'm a big guy, but very good at tennis. And, uh, and then I water ski. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I've been water skiing, so like once one ski slalom. 
That's one you shouldn't talk about, too. With a oh, that's what I said when I was a stuff. kid. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, now, no. No, never. <laughs> I have no hobbies. <laughs> How about you, Nate? Uh, yeah, I pretty much just like playing football, really. But uh, I guess you could say one of my... Uh, I can fall asleep quicker than anybody you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you guys put in so much time in the film room and, yeah. you know, at practice that when you get an opportunity to sleep, that's a good hobby to have. Yes, it is. Trust Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest non-sports accomplishment. You got to go first <laughs> on that one. Um... Nate just figured his out. No, I did. No. All right, we can, we can skip it. Um, if you could receive an endorsement deal from any company, what one would it be? Apple. <laughs> just going back to what happened yeah. before, get their products handed I to mean, you. I mean, since I did, you know, give them a shout out for yeah. my draft ad. Yeah. You know, that'd be very nice. Google. Okay. Yeah, I'll sponsor Google. <laughs> How much are their belts? Probably free. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to this one. If a Hollywood movie came out based on the life of David Bakhtiari and Nate Palmer, who would be casted in the role of each of you? I want you to pick for Nate, and I want you to pick for David. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so you can have a little bit of fun with this one. I got uh, Alan off a of hangover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd want it to be Kevin Hart just because he's funny. <laughs> Yeah, and you cool. guys, I mean, I can see a little bit of similarity, just not the height, though. Yeah, the height is, you yeah. know, he's like, he's a little here. short, he's like and two I'm foot like, four. Yeah. 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 Would that be a good pick for yourself? Yeah. Would you change who he picked for you? Uh, I would, I would have, I would have thought he would have went with Vince Vaughn, but yeah. I guess, I guess I'm not funny enough. <laughs> nah, I like. So I'm gonna I have to spice Alice, it up for the Alice next 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more here. Last concert you attended? Mm. Um, it was a country concert. Uh, I think Luke Bryan. It was a big old one in uh, Southern California. It was in Palm Springs. That's all I remember. Okay. Well, it was the only concert I ever been to, and it was uh, Trey Songs and Miguel. And it was in Champaign, Illinois. Similar music taste, then. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, lastly here, if you, could do, if you could learn to do one thing, non-sports, what would it be? Swim. Is that a sports thing? Swim, I, I don't mean, know. Recreation, I don't know how to swim. I feel like I need to learn how S to survival swim. Survival skills. Yeah, see. Uh, <laughs> There's a pool back there. No, nah, I'm okay on that one. How about you, David? <laughs> I guess speaking another language. Okay. I always wanted to do that, but couldn't. We got David Bakhtiari, Nate Palmer, our Packers here in the huddle. Coming up, it's our social media segment. We'll hear some questions for you. That's coming up next year, live from Tanner Sports Grill in Kim Kimberly in the huddle here on the... And in the huddle returns here from Tanner Sports Grill in Kimberly with David Bakhtiari, Nate Palmer, your Green Bay Packers. I am Justin Hull. Time right now for our social media segment where people listening on our 30 stations, 28 around Wisconsin, and uh, two, one in Michigan, one in Iowa, have an opportunity to tweet in their questions for today as well as go on Facebook and post those questions. The Twitter questions can go at In the Huddle Show. Facebook questions of facebook.com backslash in the huddle show or search for it like the page and you can post right there So we have some of our listeners from around the area from around the state t Chiming in with these questions and we'll start with the first question from mark in Madison I didn't bring this up earlier because it was a question from the uh, the email or the Facebook What did you guys make of Jim Harbaugh's comments about Clay Matthews? Did you hear what he said? I'll, I'll repeat it in case you didn't. This is Jim Harbaugh today. I think that young man works very hard on being a tough guy. He'll have some repairing to do to his image after the slap. If you're going to go face to face with someone, come out with some knuckles, not a slap. Well, I, I, me personally, I mean, his, you know, his comment is his comment. And, you know, I'm going to let it be his comment. I actually didn't hear the comment until me and uh, Dave was up on a ride up here from Green Bay, and he told me, and I was just like, you know, that was, you know, pretty shocking, but, you know, to each his own, I guess. Uh, you, you're looking to avoid that one, David. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Clay's fine. You, you, you ain't got to worry about it. That's it. 
What did you uh, think of the penalty, that one coming from Lynn here in Appleton? I mean, it was a penalty. I, I didn't know at the time because I, I didn't get to see it. But, I mean, after, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you know, things are happening. You know, penalties are going to get called. You can't – it's not like he wasn't intentionally doing it. You know, he's, Clay does what he does best, and that's, you know, go out there and fly around and make plays. And, of course, like, just like even what he said, he wish he could take it black back, but you can't, so – it's football, right? Exactly. I mean, those things are going to happen. And I don't know if you guys saw it. There was the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers Jets game. Uh, Leonte Davis, I believe mm -hmm. his name was, hit Geno Smith very similar with nine seconds left on the clock at the 50 yard line, setting up Nick Folk for a game winning touchdown. Yeah. So you talk about the ramifications there uh, a little bit higher. We got a Twitter question. This one coming in from uh, KL Fighter82 because everyone has fun Twitter handles. This one's for you, Nate. Uh, read in your bio you went to Simeon in Chicago. Uh, can you tell us some about uh, your classmates that you have there, a really prestigious uh, high school in, in Chicago? Uh, yes, uh, I went to school with a few people who's, you know, well-known, I guess you could say. Uh, first person being uh, Benji Wilson, the one, well, actually didn't attend school. He attended that school. He was a basketball player who got... Uh, yeah, it was, he was uh, ESPN 30 uh -huh. for 30, uh, the Benji documentary. Yeah. One of the best a, and was shot yeah. and killed tragically. Mm -hmm. And someone who I actually had the honor of actually playing basketball with was Derek Rose. Uh, he graduated the year before I did. And my high school football teammate as well as college teammate for a few years, Martez Wilson, you know, he plays for uh, the New Orleans Saints now. And um, while I wasn't there when he was there, Jabari Parker, the number one, number two basketball player in the nation from last year who's attending Duke this year. He went there and, you know, it's just countless other players that, you know, were top. Like, we have a lot of people that lead that school now that plays football. And I feel like, you know, I, we, we could thank people like myself, could thank Derek and uh, Martez Wilson for, uh, you know, setting the stone for that. Now, do you take credit for, you know, making D. Rose the, the player he is? I mean, you, you played with him back in the day, right? Yeah, I played with him back in the day, but uh, I can't take no credit for that, <laughs> no, whatsoever. You have any uh, interesting classmates? Anybody from school with you? Um, not no? classmates. My year, I just went to the same school as uh, Tom Brady and uh, Lynn Swan and Barry Bonds. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's wow. it. Wow. <laughs> All right, uh, Tim in Marshfield got this question on Facebook. Have you had to do anything yet because you are a rookie? Yes. You know, Nate was telling the chocolate yeah. milk stories. Those are pretty good. Yeah, that was funny. I, I had to buy Panera for the, for the game in St. Louis, and I had to buy Chipotle for the game we just had this weekend. So that's, that's about it. Is that all the linebackers or just the outside linebackers? Just the outside linebackers. Okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've done quite a few things. <laughs> Uh, I got hazed, you know, in training camp. I got like a whole trash can full of water dumped on me while I was sleeping. Is that so, the one you were laughing about? Yeah. yeah so okay. that, that Just making sure if there's not a hidden story that we're no, not going to no out about. We can thank uh, Josh and TJ for that one. Though they won't admit it, but I saw them. And then um, I am for the rookie line room. I am their water guy. I got to bring waters in for every meeting. And then I'm also their dip guy. I always have to have... Uh, the offense lineman's dip on me. Um, let's see. That's, that's a dip of beef jerky, by the yeah, way. Yeah, just dip to make that clear. Beef jerky. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I've gotten a couple of. I have, to bring, I have to switch off bringing donuts in every Saturday for the offense lineman, as well as uh, that's on Saturdays. Um, <laughs> and then. <laughs> wow! <laughs> traveling. <laughs> I've, I've had to uh, buy. Like lunch for them, like he said, Panera. I had to buy Jimmy John's for them. How do you keep track of all this? Uh, I keep t I keep tabs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like to jot it down so I know when I'm a veteran, you know, what I went through. So if they ever, you know, like, oh, this is too much. Like, oh, this is what I did. So. All right, I, I got to make sure I get this last one in. This is from a GBP Mark on Twitter. David, were you aware of the bike tradition, and did you make any little kids nervous when you hopped on their bike? Um, wasn't really aware. I got told when I got here, and. I had a, uh, I found a kid, I always went with the kid with the biggest bike, and then I asked him if he was going to come every day, and then once I found one that said yes, and then I was like, all right, you're my bike guy. Got a bike buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the way to do it. All right, David Bakhtiari, Nate Palmer, we are in the huddle. We'll come back and 
wrap things up, take a look at the Washington Redskins, and talk about some other NFL notes. In the huddle from Tanners in Kimberly here on the Woodward Radio Network. And we are back here from Tanner's Sports Grill in Kimberly in the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network, our final segment tonight. Packers offensive tackle David Bakhtiari, linebacker Nate Palmer along with us. And we do want to pick a winner, too, for our social media segment. We will do that each and every week and uh, send you a great prize. We're going to go with, do you have any choices there? Which question do you like the best out of those? Um, I don't know. All right, we'll go. Uh, we'll go. We'll go. KL fighter. I like the question with the Simeon question. Yeah, middle of high school. I'd so uh, we'll uh, get your information there on the uh, Twitter world again at in the huddle show. You can tweet your questions there. We'll pick a few to go over each week, and then of course post them on Facebook. Facebook.com backslash in the huddle show. Well, coming up next week, it's the Washington Redskins, and I, I see the scouting has been going on already. We got a few <laughs> TVs on here at Tanner's, <laughs> and the Redskins started at. Five or six o'clock, five fifty-five. So uh, watching those teams. What do, what do you know about Washington outside of what you've seen here the first quarter or so, whatever they're into? That they have a quarterback by the name of RG3, and he's you know pretty pretty good quarterback who not only can do it but with, with his feet, but he can throw the ball too. And they just got a safety. It look like S is <laughs> similar to to Kaepernick at all? I mean, I guess from a defensive aspect. Yeah. You know, we'll see when we watch the film, you know, but um, as a fan perspective of the game, yes. How about you, Brian? Some of those defensive players, Arakpo, I know Kerrigan's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm just tr trying to watch them when I can, <laughs> get a head start. Uh, I mean, they're good. I, I'll see more, you know, when I go into work and be able to watch more film. You got it on DVR? Are you, you going to head home and watch it? Or you gonna... uh, no, we have it on our iPads, uh, which are slash our, you know, Playbooks. You, oh, yeah, playbooks. you guys are just apple dropping left and right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just waiting for them to give me a call. <laughs> so, uh, do you watch a lot of football? I mean, I, I have to ask, is, is football players, you know, you, you would assume football, 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 or is it when you have free time, you're watching something else? Uh, I find myself w trying to watch more college football now than the actual NFL, but when I was in college, I tried to watch more NFL football. <laughs> I mean, for me, like, if I'm watching NFL football once, like, scouting my opponent, and then besides that, unless I have, like, a good buddy I played with, I try to, like, watch him individual. I don't, you know, but when I was younger, I was all about, you know, watching the NFL, but now it's like, all right, certain, either certain people or I'm doing it because I, it's my job. Too. Now you have to, yeah. yeah. NFC North notes of Chicago, a 24-21 come from behind victory over the Bengals, the Lions, 34-24. Over Minnesota, you get booze anytime anybody nice. else I, wins. I agree, it should be. <laughs> He's good over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure you'll you'll see Chicago on that Bengals film. Will you try to watch opponents that are common that you have to see there? And your schedules are pretty much accurate, pretty much spot on outside of what two games? Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see. I mean, right now it's the Redskins, so that's kind of all I'm thinking about right now. All right, well, I want to kind of wrap up the show with this, kind of going back to uh, the San Francisco game. Coming in, you guys were, were rookies. So when you watched that game last year, you had no idea you were going to end up in Green Bay. So what was, what was it like from that transition of, of what you saw on the TV in that, you know, the postseason game to, I guess, getting smack dab right in the middle of what's, you know, turning out to be a pretty good rivalry? Well, you were probably on a different end of that one, David. I shouldn't <laughs> I mean, have even brought that up. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little different. Um, I mean... It's two really good teams going at it, and uh, I mean, I'm sure you know we will see them again in the playoffs because they'll be in the playoffs, and as I know, we will be in the playoffs too. Yeah. So uh, we'll see, you know, what happens then. But uh, I mean, they're a good team, and but the, on the counter thing, you know, we're a good team too. Yeah. So He's, you, you mentioned swimming before. You did a good job of swimming through that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got cheers, more. though, so that's what counts. That's, that's all that matters. <laughs> that is all that counts as well. So uh, what have you learned about the Green Bay Packers? I, I guess coming into this, this franchise, the historic franchise, did you guys sit down and did you do a tour? Did you do any yeah. of that? Did they take you through the Hall of Fame and all that? Yeah, they took us through the Hall of Fame. Um, I, I didn't know if there's this much his history behind the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, and, um, you know I'm 
pretty excited to be a part of uh, such a historic and story franchise. Yeah, I mean, same thing. I knew, you know, it, the history went back, but I didn't know, you know, how much and how deep it did. And, uh, I mean, it's a great organization to be a part of, you know, especially, you know, when you have a team that has the history going way back and you have the fans that are just so devoted to you. That's definitely you know, something that's big. Fans, that's another way to, to get a good cheer as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm two for two now. You got to keep this going. How, how about, you know, being immersed with the Packer fans? I mean, you're out there, Green Bay, small city. Have you got to meet a lot of fans? Have you get a lot of good reaction in that? I mean, yeah, they're pretty much at the facility every day when we're at work. And I mean, especially during training camp, they're when the, they kind of keep it open. They're, I can't believe, you know, the show. I, you got bleachers at out. practice, I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> I've never seen something like that before. So, I mean, that's just remarkable. And that's an attribute to, you know, the organization, you know, as well, you know, the people who embody Green Bay. Six days away, you get to run out of that tunnel at Lambeau Field for a, for a regular season game. First opportunity to do that, I'm sure. You know, it's, it's business, get that job done, but I'm sure a, a little moment of kind of taking it in is going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Always. Anytime you, run, anytime you run out the tunnel, regardless if it's at Lambeau at a visiting stadium, you know, it's a, you know, it's a great experience, you know, but to be able to do it in front of the fans that we have here in, in Green Bay, I'm pretty sure that would be breathtaking. That's sold out for a scrimmage. As we mentioned, the, the bleachers at practice is just an yeah, amazing place to be, and you guys are a part of it. Nate, thank you so no much problem. for coming out. Great meeting you. Great talking with you. And David, so much fun. We get to do this again in a couple of weeks. Yep. Looking forward to the season with you here. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Well, big thanks. Evan Stanek here, Reggie and Zach back at Woodward Radio. To all our affiliates on the Woodward Radio Network, we thank you for being along. From Tanners and Kimberly, one more time, we cheer here on the Woodward Radio Network.